Hi, it's Giffen Lobates here and video three in what appears to be turning into a series on how smart contracts actually work. So in the previous two videos, I was talking about how you have two different kinds of entities on a blockchain. You have uh, blockchain addresses that are privately owned by people and then you have blockchain addresses that are effectively owned by smart contracts, which remember are small pieces of code that are stored on the blockchain. And you can kind of think of the uh, address owned by a smart contract as almost like the file name for the executable that is the smart contract. Maybe that analogy makes sense to some programmers. And I talked about how people can transact with a smart contract, which is the mechanism whereby people can call functions within the smart contract. <clears throat> so there are three, as far as I can tell, different kinds of functions that a smart contract can have, broadly speaking. You can have public functions in a smart contract that anybody can call. So if we take a non-fungible token instantiating smart contract as an example, you may want to have a um, get the address of the owner of a particular non-fungible token. And <clears throat> generally speaking, you want that kind of function to be public. You want anybody to be able to verify that a particular non-fungible token instantiated by a smart contract is owned by a specific person. So those are public functions. Then you have a second kind of function which are internal functions. They can only be called by the smart contract itself and they're kind of used as sort of helper things to allow the system to run. Um, it's like a conventional computer program. You may have um, some functions that you expose to the outside world and you have functions inside that are uh, procedures that you use again and again in different contexts and so you only want to have to implement them once um, but they're not relevant to ordinary people interacting with the contract. They're just there to help the smart contract tract do its job. And then the third class of functions, which are the most interesting ones, are functions which have some code in them that say only execute this if the um, person trying to call this function is doing so from an approved address. So these are functions in the smart contract that only are only triggered and executed if the function call, which remember is a transaction submitted to the blockchain, is made from an approved address. So it's kind of like saying, I will only do this if I am receiving something from an address that's on my white list, on my approved list. And uh, if there's only one person on that list, or rather one address on that list, then you have the concept of the smart contract having an owner. And in fact, in smart contract programming um, the tools, there are templates. Uh, I think Open Zeppelin's is called Ownable. You can import the Ownable library, and now you can define functions as being owned, um, and you can specify that this address, for example, the contract deployer, um, is the only one authorized to call, call those ownable functions, those private functions. So three different types of function and the fact that some of them are private owned functions is really quite important and key. And I'll be talking a bit more about that in the next video. I hope this uh, series is making sense so far and that you're finding it interesting and tune in to the next one soon. Bye for now.